This is our car, Forest. Forest is a 2005 Honda Accord, and we call it Forest because it will run forever. Honda Accords are great cars, they have great engines, but the body on this thing looks terrible. It's been in several accidents, including the person who owned it before us, who got in an accident that was fairly major on the side, and they bondoed it and they painted the whole thing over. Now, as you can see, the paint job's looking like garbage. This is the car my teenagers drive, and it has since been in a couple of accidents, hence the beautiful black hood and panels that are matte finish. So, definitely not the best looking car, but I thought, could we spice this thing up a little bit? Could we do something with it to make it look decent with a budget of $174? Now after showing you the finished result, I will be showing you three things that I learned from this project that I would do differently if I were doing this again. This was my first time trying to plasti dip an entire car by spray can, which, you know, not something that you, I would recommend doing over and over. But first attempt at it, I did learn a few things and I'll share those with you. Now because in my case the car was in such bad condition with paint peeling and clear coat all over the place, my first step was to sand everything down and I did this in a very basic way just using 120 grit and then 220 grit with an orbital sander. You can see in a lot of places I actually had to run this right down to the bare metal but it got everything nice and smooth and ready to paint. So first things first, when you're doing a plasti dip job, you have to clean the car very thoroughly and you have to let it dry for an entire day. So we cleaned it really well, got everything as clean as we possibly could. So after we got everything really clean, we let that sit overnight and the next day we were ready to start masking. Now I recommend you don't do this in a blustering 40 mile an hour wind type of day like we tried here. Once we moved it into the garage, we had much better success. Now once in the garage, we masked off all the lights. We masked off the windows, we masked off the wheels, and got everything covered up to the way we wanted it. The cool thing is you do not have to mask off your emblems, your badges. Obviously, be sure to remove your license plate and any stickers you have on the body of the car. You might be able to see here that on the tail lights and headlights, we actually left a little gap in the tape because we knew with Plasti Dip we could just peel off that edging to get a perfect finish. And we didn't want to do what's called a wet pull, where you actually have to pull it off right after you spray that last layer. We knew by letting it dry in those types of areas at least, it would create a nice clean break. Okay, at this point, we've got the car totally prepped and we have sanded, we've washed it, we've let it completely dry. There's no humidity, no moisture anywhere. Um, done a mediocre job at least at taping and getting everything off um, and covered up. So here goes our first layer. Now on this first coat, try not to judge too much. I honestly didn't do a great job with it. The goal with the first coat is to do a fairly light coat, but you also want to have an overlap of 50%. Do one band, and then on your next one, you overlap that by 50%, your next one by 50%. So you're essentially getting two coats on each section of the car. Didn't do a great job with that, but you'll see it actually turned out just fine. Now one of my favorite things to do is to help other people with their various DIY projects. And I'm doing projects all the time with people. It's a lot of fun, but I can't get to everybody that I'd love to help. Fortunately, our sponsor for this video, Fixer.com, does exactly that. For a small fee, you can be connected with a professional, a tradesperson who really knows their stuff. And they cover everything, everything from home automation, to painting, to plumbing, electrical, and everything in between. So if you want to learn more and get a little bit of help with a project you're doing now or a project you're planning for the future, head over to fixer.com slash learn to DIY, easy to access right on your phone. And from there, you can have a video consultation with a pro and save $10 by using the promo code learn to DIY. And now back to painting forest. All right, that is two coats. That is crazy. That takes a lot of paint and a lot of time. It's probably taken me anywhere from, I don't know, 30 to 45 minutes per layer. Okay, this is layer three coming up here. Now I gotta admit, by this point, I was really wondering how much paint we would need. I actually purchased 20 cans of Plasti Dip, all the matte white, and I wanted to see how far that would go. I thought maybe that would do it. I knew I would probably need more, but I thought let's see how far we could get with 20. Now, word to the wise, if you're gonna try this at home, you may need to go to several stores to purchase your Plasti Dip. I found that it's easier just to buy it all on Amazon, have it shipped to you, and not deal with it. Because I actually had to go to four different stores. You can go to your AutoZone stores or your auto parts stores, as well as Walmart to typically find this, but most of them only carry anywhere from three to four to seven or eight cans at a time. 
I'll put a link in the description below where you can go and buy this directly from Amazon and that way you can order all that you need and have it ready for your paint job. As you can see, I was wearing a respirator throughout. It's very important to have proper ventilation, which is why I left the garage door open, and then also to make sure that your breathing is protected, your lungs are protected by wearing a proper painting mask. Last can. 19 down, one to go, and it is looking pretty good. Now you can probably tell here that I did not get a fully opaque coat here with that 20th can, so I did have to go buy six new cans to finish the job. Now one thing that you may not think about when you're doing a job like this, this will murder your finger. My little index finger was killing me. So you'll start to see I was trying my thumbs, I was trying two fingers, I was trying a finger and a thumb, I tried my middle finger with the spray trigger, my ring finger, anything I could to avoid having to always use that index finger because it hurts. Now since it was my son that would be driving this mostly, I wanted to make sure that he got a chance to spend some time on it as well. So he put on another two and a half coats or so at the end, so kind of coats five and six at the end here and try to make sure everything looked really solid. One of the nice things about a matte finish is it hides a lot. In addition, it is hard actually to get drips I've found on the matte finish, especially on areas like your hood or your roof, flatter areas like that that are horizontal. It worked out really nicely. Okay, at this point, we are ready to unwrap everything, unmask everything. We have about five solid thick coats on here, and it's looking pretty darn good, especially for a rattle can job. So at this point, we're gonna go for it, unmask, and see how it comes out. Use two hands. We'll pull each each strand a little bit. Nice. Check that out. That thing is looking pretty good. I was really impressed with what you could do with a day in the garage, $174 worth of spray cans and some supplies. I think this thing was looking like a whole new car. Definitely a huge improvement over what it looked like before. Now two things stood out to us as we finished this job. Number one, it definitely needed the new grill and emblem on the front. But number two, those rims looked like they needed a new coat of paint. So Plasti Dip to the rescue. We took another three cans or so of black Plasti Dip and got started. Now I promised you three things that I learned in this process and there are three that I would definitely want to share with you. So the first one is the struggle that I had around the windows. 
So if you look close up here, you can see that there are some issues with the paint job there. It wasn't a nice clean break. What you have to do in spots like this where there's not a nice line for it to pull off on and break by itself is a wet pull. So as soon as you finish your last coat, you pull that tape off right away, make sure it gets off nice and clean and that will help things come out really well. I didn't do that and as a result it tried to kind of pull away and break a little bit. Now my second tip is to try to do this inside in a garage if possible. If you have to do it outside, make sure it's not a windy day, otherwise you're really going to struggle with this. But it didn't really make any of a mess. I didn't put anything down on the floor and it left some dust on the floor that we were able to sweep away when we were done. That was it. So we had a really good experience with doing that inside the garage. Now my third and final tip is to check the nozzle of the can from time to time. Right away we started getting some drips that fell onto the car and we had to deal with those. Now we weren't perfectionists about this so it wasn't a huge deal, but if you're trying to get a really nice even coat then those drips can run and make a little mess on your vehicle. And that's really not from over spraying but it's just from a drip that collects at the nozzle, falls off onto the vehicle and kind of messes things up. So just keep an eye on that tip from time to time, make sure everything's looking good, carry some paper towels and wipe it off as you go. So do you like it? Do you think it looks like trash? Go ahead and leave your comments below. I'm an open-minded guy, you might think it looks terrible, that's okay. Now if you like this video, I suspect you might like my other Plasti Dip video right here, where you can learn how to just Plasti Dip your emblems or badges. It's easier than you might think and it looks fantastic, so very cool to do. Take a look right here.